Mark gave me permission to, to record this. And I want to say it on the recording again that I that you have a an activity that says suggested virtual labs. I honestly feel that everyone should do it. Maybe I should make it required, but I'm trying to lay make this more of a voluntary thing. If by Monday most of you haven't done it, you got problems. If you if you didn't get the second the post test done correctly, if you don't have the correct answer in a post test, you have to do it. And you won't know what what you got on your post test till Monday, or unless you recognize that you did something wrong. So make sure you look at it. It's really important that you at least look at it, and preferably you submit the assignment. So in order to, to, to see what's going on, when I see students with their back to me, I see that that's a problem. Because I'm pointing to the, to, the, to the board. I'm actually, you know, I don't get that. So anyways, here you have a cell, and you see how ambiguous this, this question is, right? This is right off the, the, the Ohio Department of Education uh, practice end of course exam questions. And with the comments that, mo that a lot of people made was, was, gosh, this is really ambiguous, right? I'm not sure what the heck they're talking about. Now, some people made, the mis made an error, and where they made an error was that they, they didn't read. And others read but didn't understand. i got to say, personally, I think it's ambiguous too. I agree with you that it's ambiguous. But we don't have any control over the questions that they post. Is that clear? So we have to figure these questions out, whether they're fair or not fair. So here you see students investigate how an onion cell reacts to salt solutions at, of different concentrations. So they, they, right there they told you something. And this is, this is a very tricky, tricky embedded reading, right? It says salt, they have three different concentrations. Three different concentrations. Where are those three different concentrations? Well, here's one. Here's two. And here's three. So there's three different salt concentrations. So you have to read it in context. And again, part of the problem is that when you're reading a question on any exam or anywhere where someone's asking you a question, you have to put it into context. Every part of it can be important. You have to decide what's important about this and what isn't. Why are you on your phone? All right, I don't, I don't want you to look anything up. I want you to pay attention to what I'm doing so you understand what you're doing. That's all. So here you have a salt solution of three different concentrations, three different salt, concentrations of salt solutions, and I just identified all three. Do you see why it made sense that they, had, they were talking about three different concentrations of salt, right? Okay. They observe onion cells in the three salt concentrations on the microscope. Okay? So now you know there's concentration one, there's concentration two. Con the, what was the same in all three? The onion cells. What was different? The concentration. What concentration? The concentration of the solution. Is that inside or outside the cell? Outside the cell. See, all that you got from this paragraph. Do you all see that? Is there anyone that does? If there's someone in here that doesn't see that, you need to come and talk to me. Well, let's just look at it. Let's look at it. This is why, and, and one of the other comments that some people made was, I wasn't sure what I was looking at when I looked at the cell. Because the drawing looked different from what we had in class. And it doesn't look like what we can see under a microscope, really. It's just a sketch. Okay, that's why I want you to do that virtual lab activity. If you wrote that on your, on your pre or post test, I want you to go and do that virtual lab activity because you will see something that's drawn exactly like this and you'll see exactly what's happening. Is that clear? Yes. All right. So the image of an onion cell 
is at 3%. That's this, that's this thing here. This cell is at 3%. It says 3% salt solution. At 3%, would you look at that? Look at these three. I want you to look at these three pictures. This is a cell. This is a cell. This is a cell. Without really, let's assume for a second that you don't understand what this structure is, what this structure is, all this other stuff. What do you notice? Do you think this is swollen or shrunken? Do you think this is swollen or shrunken? Do you think this is normal or sh shrunken or swollen? Normal, because it's in between these two, right? So do you really need to know that this is a central vacuole? No. Not really. It would help, but it wouldn't, you don't really need to know. You know this is shrunk. This cell shrank. Whatever else happened, this cell shrank, right? This, swell, this cell sw swelled up, for sure. And this one's in between the two. Everybody agrees, right? And this is, three per this is at 3%. So what does that mean? What, what would you call this one? What, what tonic would this be at? Isotonic, correct. Yes. Right, because if it's not swollen and it's not shrunk, it's in between, right? And that's where you're going to get that, that isotonic solution. When the salt concentration inside is the same as outside, there's no change in volume because there's no osmosis. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So this is in between. That, have I read the question yet? No, I'm just looking at what I, what's been given. Look, problem solving 101. Read. First read. I know that sounds silly or like I'm being sarcastic, but I'm not. That is the, if you look up the six steps to problem solving, the very first step is read. Then secondly, you translate that into your own words. You look at the pictures, you look at the, what's been given to you in writing, and you process it, you figure out what's going on. Then you read the question, because the second step to problem solving is, what are they asking me? And what do they ask you? Enter the salt concentration for each of the two onion cell images shown on the table. Okay, why do I think it's ambiguous? Because this statement doesn't tell you, this doesn't ask for the solution, salt concentration of the solution. Right? It asks for the salt concentration of the onion cell. So if you forced me to give an answer of what, what I think the concentration of salt is inside this cell, I would say it's 3% for all three of them, if you're forcing me, right? Why do I say that? I, say that, I would say that because what is it at isotonic? 3%. 3%. So there's no change at 3%, so that's the concentration inside, this, inside the onion cell. But the way they phrase the question is ambiguous. But when I read the whole thing, when I put it into context, that's what your English teacher keeps trying to tell you, doesn't she? Read the whole thing. Look, read for theme, thematic sentences, right? Am I right? Okay. You have to apply these skills in other classes, guys. You have, you have to put this question into context. So the context here is that they're asking about the salt concentration of the of the so I would I would wait of the solution. Do you agree that contextually that's the answer? Yes. All right. So that's the question, or rather, that's the question. They're asking me what is the concentration of the solution in these two. I know this is three percent. What's the concentration in these two? Why do they say there may be more than one possible right answer? Because you can't tell the exact answer with the information given. But what information? What do you? What do you definitely know? You know, number two is what. Number two has to be more than three percent exactly. Why must it be more than three percent? That's right. That's exactly right because it's shrank. And number two shrank. So that means that solution has to have more salt on the outside than on the inside. So that has to be that means it has to be greater than three percent. And that's badly drawn. I apologize. That means that the the salt concentration, concentration of salt in solution two on the outside of the cell has to be greater than three percent. Does everybody agree with that?
So the, some of the answers I saw were like this one where it said, this is, as I said, Kamar said, Kamar said I could, I could use hers as an example. And there were a lot of right answers, by the way, a lot. But about 20% of you gave some really interesting answers that were a little confusing to me, and I want to address those before we go any further. So you see how this says 97%? That's correct. Anything above 3%, if she would have put 5%, that'd be right. 97%, that's fine. All right, I don't care what percentage, as long as it's bigger than 3%. Yeah? I have a question for the second one. I'll put 0.5%. 0.5% is perfect. So anything, what for this, for number three, What's number three? What do we know about number three? It has to be lower than 6%. Excellent. That's exactly right. It has to be, number three has to be less than, the salt concentration has to be less than 3%. Why does it, and 0.5 is less than 3, 1% is less than 3, 2% is less than 3. It could have been any answer. That's why they write down, you see how they wrote down this thing? They gave you a clue. They said there may be more than one correct answer. Actually, there is more than one correct answer. Anything under 3% would be right. Okay? So that's, that's how this works. And by the way, just so we're clear, and you see this is her pretest. She got it right on her post-test, just for the record. But when you, you see this is a common thing that students do. You reverse hypertonic and hypotonic. You reverse it. It happens all the time. I've told you since the fall. This is the common thing that kids do. I see it over and over again. All right? Over and over again, I see that mistake happening. You reverse hypertonic and hypotonic. Just remember, hyper, hyper, someone who's hyper. Mendoza's hyper. What is he? He's moving around too much. He's yelling too much. He's doing too much. Right? Right? Yeah. That's hyper. Hyper. Hypo is... Calm. Under. Okay? When you have to think of an image, put an image in your brain. Hyper is someone running around, jumping around. That means too much. Too much. So hyper is too higher concentration outside than inside. And, I, and hypotonic is lower concentration outside than inside. Of salt. Of salt. Yeah. For which one? Uh, for today's today's assignment, not yet, but I will. Are we clear on this on this answer? Now, I just want to one more thing because I want to address some of the common things that you guys did wrong here, or what I feel you did wrong. And unfortunately, one of our students left that really should have stayed because I really would like it when I'm doing this. You guys can leave in just a minute if you have to go to the restroom. You could have waited. Here's what somebody wrote, 92 on one side. Because you know what? The other thing I think that's ambiguous about this problem that I don't like is that you have this thing that looks like it's a membrane, right? And they, they, you, it makes you think you need to put a percentage here, right? And a percentage here. I can understand someone getting confused like that. I know you. Some, most of you did not make that mistake, but some of you thought you should. But if you read the question, it says a concentration. What is the concentration for two and for three? They don't ask you for what's the concentration inside and outside. They don't ask you for two concentrations in each one. They ask you for one concentration in each one. But that's okay. I'm all right if you did that. But here's the problem. Some people did 95%, which would have been right if they just would have been 95%, right? Is that correct? Because it's higher than 3%, so you're good for number two. But then they did this. A lot of you did this. I want to say a lot. I mean like five of you. 95%. And on the other side is 100%. Well, there's a couple problems I have with this. Is this inside or outside? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if this is inside or outside. I don't know if this is inside or outside. And these two concentrations don't necessarily depend on each other, at least at first. You asked me earlier, why? Why did you get in trouble? Right? Is that correct? Right, right, right. You asked why. Is that correct? Right now is why. As I'm trying to explain this to you, as I'm explaining an answer that's going to help you graduate high school, you're turned around doing something with her hair. Right? So I just want to make sure we're clear on that. 
You want to know why? I'm explaining it to you right now. So, not, when you're putting 95% on one side and 100% on the other side, like this, then that's an issue. Because it's confusing. If they ask you for one percentage, give one percentage. And I know why they did this, right? I, there's not, someone else did something like this. They put 95 and on the other side of that little line, they put 5%. Why did they do that? Can somebody here guess why they did that? Because they're thinking it had the equal 100, right? That's not true. The two sides don't have the equal 100. The inside has the equal 100%, and the outside has the equal 100%. So don't get that confused, right? So what I mean by that is the kinds of questions they're going to ask on the OST are right here. There it is. Okay? So the fact when you have a cell, and again, if you, if you go ahead and do... And you, you go ahead and you do the uh, the lab. If you're not seeing this, the lab, this the virtual lab does a one, and we did a virtual lab in the fall, right? If you go ahead and do that and look at the uh, at that virtual lab, you'll see this happen. Okay. So if you have an egg, this area out here, all of this out here has to equal 100%. Then everything in here, and let me, let me redo this with a thicker line so you can see it more clearly. Everything in here, out here, has to equal 100%. Everything inside has to equal 100%. Is that, is, does that make sense? Okay. However, if you have a beaker that says that this is 20 and this is 40, these two don't have to equal 100%. Because what is, what is this? 20 is what? 20% is the concentration of salt inside the cell. What's the other 80%? water. This 40 is what? Concentration outside the cell. And the rest is the water. So that 100% is actually 100% outside and whatever percentage salt, whatever percentage water, and this is the percentage inside, whatever percentage salt, whatever percentage water. What they're going to do is they're going to do the kinds of questions that you have in your practice end of course exam packet that I gave you, okay? That I'm telling you we all agreed that on Monday it's due. And I'll make the assignment now along with the other assignment that someone asked about a second ago in Jupiter grades. Okay. So make sure you do those problems so when on Monday we discuss them, we can look at the kinds of questions you're going to see on that OGT. And, I, and I'm going to tell you what, you want to know what... I'm sorry I keep saying OGT. I meant OST. It used to be OGT. The OST are confusing the fact that it's that it's uh, you know ambiguous. Well, that's the kind of the fact that you have to read the problem and try to figure out what's going on. That is what you're going to have to do on the OST. That's why we do these pre and post tests, and we're going to keep doing them all the rest of the year. Are we clear? Yeah. All right. Finish what you can today. This assignment will not be due till Monday. And we'll, I'll give you time on Monday to finish it and upload it. Make sure that, that the previous case study is uploaded. All your audios are uploaded. If you do need help after you've read the step-by-step -step thing, please come and see me. Thank you. Are we all clear? Yeah. All right, good.